Cavalry FC have already clinched a playoff spot and they can thank their potential defender of the year, the Flying Dutchman. To kick off this week's episode of High Press, we will once again be taking a look at the power rankings where a few clubs have climbed up, a few have dropped, especially York. Yeah, I mean, to begin, Cavalry still leads the way after a great week, four-point week, b- both games on the road. They're always going to climb or stay at the top as they have. In terms of risers, Forge climbs to second thanks to their draw. Mostly due to those around them. Um, ditto with Halifax, who rises one spot, largely due to their road performance against Pacific. But of course, those two teams mostly rose because of the fallers, and York was the big faller. They go all the way to six with their uh, rough home loss to Valor, where they didn't perform that well, and it ends up costing them in the power rankings. Meanwhile, Ottawa drops to fourth off the back of their loss to Vancouver on the road, although they did make up a bit of ground with their, their home draw to Pacific, although a win would have done them wonders. Moving along now to our match week in 60 seconds section, we will start at the very top of the power rankings with Cavalry FC. Now the Cavs did clinch a playoff spot on September 12th. Last season, it was Ottawa the first team to clinch on September 24th. So just by comparing that, you could see how good of a season the Cavs are really having. Alex, could this be their best season since the Island Games? I think this, yeah, this might be the best Canadian Premier League regular season we've seen since those Island Games. I mean, in 2021, Cavalry and Forge had quite the season. They finished tied with 50 points. Last year, Ottawa ended up winning the title with 49 points, the regular season title, that is. This year, Cavalry, they're at 43. Um, So they just need seven points to match the 50 from 2021. I think there's no reason why they can't do it. Three of their next four at home. Of course, we have to give a shout out to, to the 2019 season. Both them and Forge had. Cavalry had an astounding 62 points across 28 regular season games. That number's not getting touched for a while, nor is Forge's 56 that they put up in that uh, season. But now for Cavalry to already be pushing 50 with four to go, especially after the start they had, I mean, it shows the kind of summer that, that, that it's been for them. Absolutely, and a big part of that is Dan Klomp. He's been sensational. Right now, he's the Canadian Premier League's lone remaining outfield Ironman player who's doing some impressive things on and off the ball. And Alex, he also pitched in with a goal this week. Yeah, I mean, it's very impressive. The first off, being an Ironman, it's tough. I mean, it was credit to him and Dan Nimick for being the lone remaining ones. Nimick finally got a night off, uh, you know, so Klomp is the lone remaining one because just the travel, right? Like this, you know, you're, you're going to Halifax away like they did this week. Like you're going across Ontario all the way to BC, yet Klomp every week, he's there in the heart of their back three, just doing his thing. And the biggest part for me is that his performances just, just haven't dipped. Like he's still everywhere covering ground as a center back sometimes he'll be making huge tackles sometimes he'll join the play just for fun his passing is a huge part of their build-up uh defensively he's just bullying strikers you add in that he's chipped in with three goals now including the winner against halifax i mean it's everything and more you want from a center back so certainly he's putting himself in that defender of the year conversation but hey i mean right now he's been cavalry's best player so if if he's the best player on the best team mvp conversation certainly isn't out of reach Rocketing up to second in the power rankings from fifth is Forge FC after picking up a draw. For Forge, it was their fourth straight draw against the top six teams. I'm wondering if it's a point gained or a point loss because if you look at the Cavs right now, their last five matches, they have four wins, one draw, where Forge has one win, four draws. Alex, are they doing enough to win the title? I mean, I don't think they're doing enough to win the title because... Look, I mean, that's partly, you know, the partly of the reason why Forge is all the way up to second. It's not them so much as it is the teams around them. So I guess the good news is Forge is doing enough to make the playoffs. They're getting points. Teams around them aren't necessarily getting points as we saw this weekend. But for a Forge team that wants to win the title, uh, you know, these draws are just allowing Cavalry to create separation every week that Cavalry wins and Forge's, Forge draws. Um, So, I mean, it's good if they want to make the playoffs and go win another North Star Shield, which, you know, you know they absolutely want to do. But given the talent on their roster, this was a team that should be competing for the title. And unless they get some wins over the last few games, uh, it feels like that's slowly slipping away. Number three in the power rankings, we have the Halifax Wanderers, who had a very mixed week. They had a great draw away against Pacific with a heavily rotated starting 11. And on top of picking up that unlikely point, they also gained valuable U21 minutes. But then they went and lost to the Cavs. They started way too slow, fell into a 2-0 deficit, and were unlucky not to find an equalizer. Alex, did the slow start kill them? Yeah, I think so. I think it was, of course, they'll feel hard done by that Dan Nimick goal that was ruled out late on was... You know, it was a very tough call that, uh, you know, was 
you know, very harsh, I'd say, against uh, Halifax. But also, if you're looking at the overall game, Cavalry was just dominant for the first 60 minutes. And anytime you let a team as good as Cavalry come into your ground and dominate like that, um, you know, you're going to struggle to win games. And I think that's kind of been the, you know, what's kind of slowed Halifax a bit as of late. They're in a good position. They're in a playoff spot. Uh, they still control their destiny, but that's three straight losses now at home. Two other top six teams. They, of course, have beat Valor and Vancouver across that span. Uh, but I guess that also shows the secrets out on Halifax. Teams are going to play them hard, so they have to be ready for the, these sorts of performances from opponents. Dropping down to number four in the power rankings is Atletico Ottawa, who had a sloppy road loss against Vancouver that cost them valuable points. And then they had a tale of two halves against Pacific. Came out kind of slow, picked the rhythm up, and honestly, at the end of the day, it was an entertaining game from Ottawa. But Alex, was it a missed chance to take all three points? Yeah, and I think both games were really a missed chance from Ottawa. And uh, they could have really put some pressure on Calvary with a pair of wins against the BC-based teams. Uh, but instead, I mean, the Vancouver game was just frustrating from an Ottawa point of view. I was at the game, and they made two very sloppy turnovers on both goals. I mean... Carlos Gonzalez was losing his head after the second goal, and I can't blame him. It was just a, a horrible turnover that that shocked, you know, sunk them. And uh, you look at how in the home game, Pacific started well. Ottawa defended well. Just it was a moment of magic from Pacific, and then from that point on, it was all Ottawa, and they just couldn't capitalize. So I think they're frustrating, you know, results for two different reasons. One, they just were their enemies of, of their own downfall. And then the second one, they just couldn't finish in the key moments and credit to Pacific for also holding on late. Uh, but Ottawa easily could have got six. Instead, they leave with one. In fifth place in the power rankings, we have Pacific FC who picked up a pair of draws, one at home against Halifax, which was super disappointing with that heavily rotated squad and one away against Ottawa. Pacific's defending has been pretty good right now. Emil Gazdov is finding his feet, which is fantastic, making a massive PK save against Ollie Bassett. And a fun fact, Bassett has not missed in his previous nine attempts, but offensively, they're really struggling. Both teams set up in a back five against Pacific and it might just be their kryptonite, isn't it, Alex? Yeah, I mean, the, the five on both games was just giving them fits. Something about the width it took away, it just left kind of Pacific without answers because you add, you add in the width it took away, but then also the, you know, both teams kind of played a 5-3-2 slash 5-4-1 that also took a lot away centrally, and Pacific didn't have any answers. I think a big thing to look at is how to get more out, out the left side of the field because they have the data Luke overlap on the right, but on the left, Eamon Salouf keeps cutting in and drawing attention. I mean, teams are double and triple teaming him, understandably so, given how the form he's in. But then there's no overlap threat to either open up the space for him or, you know, just take advantage of the, the space that Salouf's opening up. And I think you add that and sometimes the lack of consistent movement from the midfield, like the one they showed on the Stefan Yates goal against Ottawa, they need a lot more of that. And those woes are, are, are allowing teams to set up in these back fives against Pacific and frustrate them. So expect to see a lot of that going forward until Pacific address those issues. York United are sixth place in the power rankings after a very undisciplined loss to Valor. It's just simply not good enough at home as this unfortunate streak continues for them. Could this lack of discipline prove to be very costly for them as they target playoffs, Alex? Yeah, I think it's, you know, the biggest example is the Mobubuli red card, which quite frankly, it's pretty inexcusable for York just because that's your captain. That's your best player. Must win game ahead at, against Pacific at home, one where you can do all sorts of damage in the title race, and he's missing due to descent on a second yellow card. And I think those sorts of moments, of course, Noah Batney getting a red, unlucky, absolutely, but he caught De Brienne in the thigh and it was always going to be a red card. It's just all those little moments because now you need you 21 minutes, you need your best players on the field. And with the, the, all these suspensions, it's not helping them, and uh, they, they'll need to clean that up quickly. In seventh place in the power rankings, we have Vancouver FC, and it was James Cameron who provided some late drama and a fun 2-1 win over Ottawa. Vancouver keep playing spoilers in the title race and the playoff race and are actually starting to play some pretty entertaining football. Alex, should they be excited for the 2024 season? Yeah, they're setting some good building blocks. They've been playing some good football over the last month or so, even two months really since a lot of these signings I just haven't getting been getting results but I think they've settled into an identity they like this 4-3-3 4-3-2-1 their midfield's a lot more solid and they're not losing games there defensively they've been figuring out a back four 
uh, and they're giving a lot of minutes to youngsters, which, hey, maybe that led to some growing pains this year, but that's only going to pay off for them next year. There's a lot to like, really. And, you know, other than figuring out their attack, which, you know, will come with a mix of chemistry, acquisitions, et cetera, that they're doing a good job of building a spine, which is key for an expansion team. In last place in our power rankings, once again, is Valor FC, who did experience some deja vu from their opening match. They headed to York, picked up a road win, just their second of the season in a very good performance. And Alex, who stood out to me? It was Dante Campbell, who could be on track for a team of the season place. Yeah, I mean, it feels wild for, uh, you know, a team at the bottom, but that just shows how good Campbell's been. He's been Phil DeSantos' Swiss Army knife. He's played midfield, he's played fullback, he's played center back. I'm surprised when, you know, we haven't seen him in goal yet up, up front. I, I'd back him in those positions. And uh, it's, it's funny because it's both the positive of how good he's, he's been. And it's been a story of Valor's season. Injuries, first of all, because of all the positions he's played. And just also that they've had some individual stand-ups, especially in midfield and at the back. But it's really just they, can, they haven't had such a standout up front. And that's been their biggest issue. They've been defensively solid for most of the year. But goals eluded them. Until this game, at least, there was a much-needed goal outburst, but, uh, you know, maybe a bit too little too late in their season, although they, they remain alive. It's time for the look ahead at the Tony Bet match of the week between Cavalry FC and Vancouver FC. The storyline is pretty simple. The Cavs could reduce their magic number to as low as one for the title, meaning that they could clinch the title next week. But Alex, how could that affect the rest of their season if they do that? Yeah, I mean, it, it could be very interesting because, of course, the title is a huge goal, a huge accomplishment. Uh, you get the CONCACAF Champions Cup spot. You lift a trophy for Cavalry, like we've mentioned all year. It's the element of revenge for 2019. Get, you know, even 2021 as well, that regular season title. But also, this is a team that wants to get their hands on the North Star Shield. They want to do that double. I mean, every team out there wants to do that double. Um, but it makes their run-in a lot more interesting should they clinch the title this easy because that can mean that the last two games are dead rubbers for them, that they just need to you know, stay healthy and focus for the playoffs. And then with this format, say they win that first playoff game, because obviously they'd clinch the being in the 1v2 game, then they wouldn't play for another two weeks. So that means that over the next, you know, over the month and a half leading into the title, they might play one, you know, two games that mean something over a month span. And that could be huge in their their, their quest to win the title because as are the, the North Star Shield part of me, because as we've seen before in other leagues, you need momentum at this time of the year if you want to make a playoff run. And um, obviously they have a deep squad and maybe given uh, some of the injuries they've suffered, this rest will help them. But as we've seen with other teams, it could also hurt them as much as it helps them. There is no denying the fact that the Cavs are on fire right now. They've won six of their last seven home matches, just the one loss against Ottawa. Three of their next matches are at home. They could also host two crucial home matches if they win that 1v2 match. So just given the fact that they're so dominant right now at home, keep an eye out on them as they chase the double. But right now we got to look just at Vancouver for the time being. And the tactic to watch is Vancouver's three-man midfield made up of Simmons, Garcia, and Fry. Alex, how will the Cavs handle that midfield? Yeah, I mean, for, for Vancouver, it's been a nice little formula that's offered them a lot of solidity, especially defensively. Uh, Garcia has been a great shield for the, the back four, and even Fry, Fry, he loves a tackle, so you're never losing defensive responsibility from him and Simmons as well, and defensive midfielder. Uh, and then on the ball, I mean, Fry's been pulling the strings a lot lately with his left foot, and Garcia can also spread around, so can Simmons. And they've finally been able to give Vancouver a, an ability to match up against teams in midfield. Uh, you know, they did well to match up against Forge despite the loss. Forge just got them in wide areas that game. And they've gone up against Ottawa. They matched well. They've gone up against Pacific, matched well. For Cavalry, especially with no Jesse Daly in the lineup with suspension, Charlie Traff Trafford came off injured against Halifax. They could be a bit thin in midfield. So for Vancouver, that could be an area where they could really exploit the Cavs. And from there, if they de destabilize them in midfield, maybe they'll open up space in the attack for uh, Vancouver's front three to, to do some damage. Now, Alex, to end off the episode, we have our burning question. This week, it'll be focused around Meyer Bevan, who has gone ice cold at the wrong time. He's only scored two PK goals in his last 10 appearances. Can he score this weekend and revive his Golden Boot hopes? Well, based on what we've seen from him this season, he scored three of his nine goals against Vancouver. Uh, so I'd say yes, based on that. He's just, he's like this matchup and he needs it. He currently sits at nine. Ollie Bassett leads the league with 11, missed a chance to go to 12 this weekend. So a brace all of a sudden has him tied. A hat trick has him back in the lead. So you bet Bevan will be fired up to keep scoring against Vancouver as he has all season. 
That is all the time we have for in this episode of High Press. I really hope you all enjoyed it. And if you want the opportunity to win the latest edition of Derby Magazine, find One Soccer on social media, reach out to us, and let us know if you think that Meyer Bevan will score this weekend against Vancouver FC. We will pick a winner at random, so best of luck, everyone, and be sure to tune in for next week's update.